Monday morning, wealth creation investors and traders. Matthew Buckley, the chief investment strategist here at WCI. With your Monday market outlook, stand by for another triple digit up triple digit down day. We have a lot of macroeconomic data coming on a flight schedule this week, not just here domestically in the United States, uh, but overseas as well. Capping off uh, the, the slew of financial data on Friday with our non- farm payroll and i gotta tell you that the future's being up right now and the, uh and well, they're essentially flat so let's just say i am i'm shocked the nikkei imploded two percent the shanghai off uh a percent uh the sh the nikkei is at a uh two and a half month low right now uh and is is not showing any sign of letting up and the china official purchasing managers index pmi fell to 50 and a half in january from december's uh 51 so we're looking at a little bit of slowing here uh in china if you take a look at uh when, uh, Friday night, I told you, hey, as you're enjoying your beer, Friday night, I'm going to be hanging out and watching this number, manufacturing PMI 50 and a half. So not the best economic data out of China over the weekend. And usually as Asia goes, if I, as I said, the bank, uh, the uh, U.S. markets tend to go, right? So the Nikkei being down uh, to two and a half month lows, the Shanghai imploding, I would tell you, uh, is not d does not bode uh so well, the Nikkei is in an official correction territory. It's down 10% since its uh, six-year peak of 16.30.20 on December 30th. So firmly in correction territory, fell another 2%. And folks, if Asia goes, uh, we're going with it, okay? Uh, as we've talked about, uh, we are the... Um, the mattress, so to speak, for China and Japan, the foreign, uh, the forest large and holder of U.S. debt, both those countries. So if China's going to implode, Japan's going to implode, they're going to take us down uh, with it. So it's it, January, horrible month in the market, right? And got news for you, more bad news is to come. The February is the worst month out of the year for equities uh, on the calendar. Okay, out of the 11 months, uh, 11 months out of the 12 months, uh, February is the worst. But I said 11 months because January was pretty freaking uh, bad. So get ready. All eyes really are going to be on central banks. What's Janet Yellen going to do? Obviously, they have they've told us that hey, we're going to throttle back a nice easy 10 billion a month. But what about rates? I, in my opinion, let's let's go. Let's read the last chapter first. Let's take a look at Friday. We have non-farm payroll and the unemployment rate. Consensus is 185,000 jobs. Remember the last jobs report for December, 74,000. Everybody thought that somehow a one mysteriously fell off. It didn't. And now we're looking for essentially double, uh, double that, more than double that at 185K. Hmm. Especially with all the snowstorms and everything that was going on in Jerry. Okay, Let, let's see if we can print 185. But again, as we know, our government can print whatever number they want to uh, print. Uh, I'm hearing consensus numbers uh, on the unemployment rate all the way down to 6.5%. That would be the Fed's target rate, right? They've, they've wanted to hit the 6.5%, and, uh, and boom, we're out of this thing. We'll start raising interest rates at 6.5%. Folks, we're in a deflationary environment, and the Fed's going to start raising interest rates. Do you know what raising interest rates is going to do to this struggling economy, let alone to our struggling United States? You know we pay debt, and we pay interest on our debt? And with interest rates this low, we've been given Congress and the Obama administration a free pass, essentially. Imagine if interest rates were where they were five, six, seven years ago. How much more in debt we'd be. We can't even afford to pay the, uh, the interest on our debt, let alone our debt. Um, so Friday is going to be huge, obviously, in the market. Average, average hourly earnings are going to be a, a big report today. Monday, the market's kind of in a, in a holding pattern uh, here, uh, fine manufacturing PMI came in in line, but ISM is going to be the uh, the the big number here. Inst Institute for Supply Management Manufacturing PMI. It's a level of diffusion index based on surveyed purchasing managers in the manufacturing industry. Why do we care? Leading uh, indicator of economic health. Businesses react quickly to market conditions, and their purchasing managers hold perhaps the most current and relevant insight in the company's view of the economy. So we're going to find out uh, at about 10 a.m. how things are looking, construction spending, and also ISM manufacturing prices. Also get total vehicle sales, which is an interesting uh, look at uh, potential uh, look at the, the retailer. Factory orders on Tuesday. 
Wednesday, we have our uh, ADP, uh, ADP non-farm uh, payroll, which obviously ADP is a, a private company. And who cares about ADP? As we've laughed about many times, ADP comes out with their number on Wednesday, causes people uh, and analysts to scramble Thursday to update their Friday number, and then the Friday number comes out and nobody even remembers what ADP was. ADP was so far off last time. Look at this. 238 k last time, and the government printed 74 k so really don't care about ADP, to be honest with you. Uh, ISM non-manufacturing PMI, right? Not We, we talked about not uh, ma getting manufacturing PMI. What about non-manufacturing PMI, okay? Uh, same type of thing. Purchasing managers are going to uh, uh, let us know what's going on here. Thursday, obviously, weekly unemployment claims, our trade balance number, non-farm productivity quarter over quarter, and uh, unit labor cost. And we'll have some FOMC uh, members uh, speak. And a loan officer survey, right? Loan officer survey, well, guess what? They know about spending and confidence. Rising debt levels are a sign that lenders feel comfortable issuing loans. And that consumers and businesses are confident that they can spend money and pay it back. Big, big week uh, on uh, in the market today, and it's going to be very, very interesting to see uh, what type of week we have. Futures are turning south right now. I fully expected that. Uh, we have bullish double verticals on SDS. We have bullish double verticals on the VIX that are looking to, uh, again, make money today. In our primary live trade brief model portfolio over the past couple weeks, as the market's rolled over or gone through these triple-digit up-down days, these trades are up over $7,000 in two weeks as our bilge pumps, right? Some of our longs are taking Taking it on the chin, duh, of course, but that's why they're longs. I really don't care because I'm bullish out to 2015, 2016, or bearish, or whatever I am on individual trades, but I can use the front months to hedge. And if you are not hedging, if you're not potentially making money in this market on these triple digit up and down days, you're doing it wrong. Nameless, rankless, I'm just telling you, you're doing it wrong. You can keep flying around this market without your ejection seat, and if you do, you're going to get killed. Here at Topkin Options, that's not what we're all about. We're about helping you, providing mutual support, and making sure you have that ejection seat and that parachute. So give us a call if you want to get on board. Got to run. Get ready for my weekly options live trade brief every Monday morning at 945. Throwing on two to three uh, weekly options trades that I manage Monday through Friday, and we're averaging $1,000 a week in gains since uh, January 1st. That's uh, some pretty superior execution. Okay, got to run. Happy hunting. Make sure you hedge, and I'll be back Tuesday over at Top Gun Options with my market sit rep report. We'll see you.